MCAT 2017 CRAM, Biochemical and Biological Foundations of Living Systems. Passage 15, A Potential Cure for Ebola Hemorrhagic Fever. As you view the reading of the passage, you'll notice some highlighted snippets of text. What I want you to do is garner meaning from these specific selections in order to answer the questions that follow. The passage is manageable and so are the questions. So good luck and happy reading. All right. Paragraph one, Ebola hemorrhagic fever is considered to be one of the most deadly viral diseases with fatality rates of up to 90%. In 2014, a new strain of the Ebola virus emerged in a few countries in West Africa. The outbreak was the most deadly since the discovery of the virus. The pathophysiology of the disease begins with fever and flu-like symptoms that occur when phagocytic cells encounter the virus and release an excess of cytokines. In the terminal stages of the disease, the virus infects endothelial cells, comprising, compromising them completely and eventually leading to hypovolemic shock. As of August 2014, there is no vaccine for the virus. But over the past decade, several experimental drugs have shown promise in treating Ebola. The most successful ones use monoclonal antibody mixtures, MAB for short, two of which, MB003 and ZMAB, have shown very promising results. Recently, a group of scientists performed a trial using optimized mixtures that combine the best Components of MB003N ZMAB. These cocktails are called ZMAP1 and ZMAP2. The experiment consisted of challenging rhesus. Okay, remember the goal of the test is not correct pronunciation, so I'm going to try my best with this one. MAC accused with the Ebola virus. These MAC accused were divided into three groups treatment with uh, ZMAP1, group A treatment with ZMAP2 group B and control group that was given just the nonspecific adjuvants. These are chemicals that are added to boost the immune response, but no monoclonal antibodies. Okay, so that was group C. Drugs were administered on days three, six, nine, and nine after the infection with the virus and the survival rates of each group are shown in figure one. OMG, that means some of them died. All right, so let's take a look at figure one. Figure one, survival rate of rhesus macacues, please forgive me for this, after infection with Ebola virus in three experimental groups. So remember that group A received the ZMAP1 treatment cocktail Group B received the ZMAP2 treatment cocktail, and Group C um, just received basically nonspecific adjuvants, which are chemicals that are added to boost the immune response, but no monoclonal antibodies. Okay, so Group C serves as a control. And recall that on days three, six, and nine, um, post-infection, the drugs were administered to each of the groups, okay? All right. If the results of the ZMAP trials were replicated in humans infected with Ebola, would it result in lifelong immunity? A, no, because the monoclonal antibodies do not activate memory cells nor effector cells. B, yes, because the monoclonal antibodies activate the cell-mediated response. C, no, because the monoclonal antibodies do not activate memory cells, only effector cells. Or D, yes, because the monoclonal antibodies activate the humor. All right, I'll give you a little bit more time to think. All right, let's get into this. Immunological memory, um, basically 
depends on challenging the lymphocytes with antigens regardless of humoral or cell-mediated responses, okay? Antibodies by themselves do not provide lifelong immunity. The monoclonal antibodies were produced by another organism and then given to the infected organisms. Hence, they will not provide lifelong immunity because they do not activate memory cells nor effector cells. All right, okay. The Ebola virus increases cytokine production and compromises the endothelial cells, which systems are directly linked with these cells. Is it A, nervous system and renal system respectively, B, reproductive system and muscular system respectively, C, lymphatic system and digestive system respectively, or D, immune system and cardiovascular system respectively. I'll give you a moment to think or decide rather. All right. Okay, so cytokines can be released by um, lymphocytes. Endothelial cells are basically simple squamous cells that line blood vessels, okay? Hence, lymphocytes belong to the immune system and blood vessels are part of the cardiovascular system. Thus, the immune system and cardiovascular system would be both affected, all right? Okay. According to the passage, what can be expected of the activity rate of plasma cells for the experimental groups? A, group B will have the highest plasma cell activity. B, impossible to determine which group will have the highest plasma cell activity. C, group A will have the highest plasma cell activity. Or D, group C will have the highest plasma cell activity. I'm not even sure if group C is an experimental group. Well, <laughs> I guess you know now that this is not a possible answer choice. All right. Okay, so um, plasma cells are derived from B cells, okay? They produce antibodies that help fight infection. There's no evidence uh, that ZMAP the ZMAP drug activates um, B cells. Thus, the passage provides no information about the effects of the ZMAP um, cocktail on B cell activation. Okay? All right. Cytokines can be divided in pro inflammatory and anti inflammatory. According to the passage, which of these two are likely to prevail during an Ebola infection and why? A, pro-inflammatory because they may trigger a negative feedback mechanism with lymphocytes leading to a sepsis-like condition. B, anti-inflammatory because they may trigger a positive feedback mechanism with lymphocytes dampening the immune response. C, anti-inflammatory because they may trigger a negative feedback mechanism with lymphocytes dampening the immune response, or D, pro-inflammatory because they may trigger a positive feedback mechanism with lymphocytes leading to a sepsis-like condition. I'll give you a moment to decide. Definitely go back to the passage if you need to. All right.
Okay, so the passage mentions fever, which is typical of the inflammatory response. Pro-inflammatory cytokines um, recruit more lymphocytes that eventually release more cytokines. Okay, so this is like positive. The passage also mentions hypovolemic shock, which is um, typical of sepsis. Hence, pro-inflammatory cytokines are likely to prevail and they may trigger a positive feedback mechanism with lymphocytes leading to a sepsis-like condition. Okay, all right.